Hi everyone, here is Stephen Van Tassel, Wildlife Control Consultant, bringing you another episode of Living the Wildlife as part of the Pesky Podcast family. Hey, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit today about understanding LD50. Those of you who are involved in pest control are certainly familiar with that uh, acronym, LD50. Those of you in wildlife control, maybe not so much. So I wanted to take a few moments today and talk about what LD50 means and what's good about it, what's bad about it, and how it's important for you uh, if you apply pesticides, why it's important for you to understand LD50. And I'll talk about how it applies for vertebrate control, which is certainly my specialty. So let's talk a little about what LD50 is. All right, so let's talk about that. So the first thing you want to, whoops, let me go back up here a little bit. Let's talk about how the research is done. So LD50 refers to lethal dose 50%. Okay, and that's what the acronym means. LD50 is lethal dose 50%. So 50% of the test population dies. And so the LD50 is basically an average or a snapshot of how toxic a particular pesticide is for animals. So whenever they're doing pesticidal research, the EPA requires that that pesticide be tested on various organisms. So LD50 can be used on insects, it can be used on plants, it can be used on animals. <clears throat> so there are two different ways to perform that research. One type of research is called an acute feeding. So acute feeding is where you take the, take the toxin and you force it into the animal's mouth or in some cases they can actually have the animal feed on their own. But you're trying to find out how much toxin an animal has to eat in one dose to die or at least 50% of the target population to die. Now, how large are these toxic, these populations? Well, the researchers may have anywhere from 20 to 40 animals, perhaps. Uh, depends on the type, that, on how rigorous they're performing their research. But you're looking at about 20. So when they feed these animals, once they get a dose where 50% of the population dies, then that is the LD50. And they then calculate that on the basis of milligrams per kilogram. Now a kilogram is about 2.2 pounds and a milligram is one millionth of a kilogram. So we're talking about some very small amounts of poison to kill animals. So when we're dealing with uh, let's say an animal as big as a, a rat for instance, a rat often weighs around you know 12 to 16 ounces maybe a little bit more than a pound, but a pound is, that's starting to become a big rat. That is less than half of a kilogram. A kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So when we, so when they say, let's say eight milligrams of this toxin is needed to, for, at, to kill an animal that weighs 2.2 pounds, you're really talking about something that's more like four milligrams to kill that rat. That's 50% of the population. So that's, again, acute dosing method. All LD50 exercises or all LD50 tests are done with acute poisoning. How much is needed to kill that animal with one dose, whatever that dose size may be. Now, another study that can be done with toxicology, toxicology is the study of poisonous materials, is what's called the subacute. And this is how you're feeding an animal a little bit over time, a little bit today, a little bit more tomorrow, a little bit more the next day. And you're looking at what the longer term effects or how many times the animal has to feed on something in smaller doses to ultimately kill it. That is also important research. However, most toxicants have not been studied that way. More, most toxicants are studied with the LD50 under the acute poisoning. 
Now you may say, well, Stephen, what's the big deal? I really don't care. Well, it matters because some poisons are actually more deadly when you take a little bit at a time over days. So in other words, when we're dealing with something like a first-generation anticoagulant, now if you know first-generation anticoagulants, those are warfarin, chlorofacinone, difacinone. Those toxicants are actually more toxic if you take a little bit each day than if you took all that material in one day. I know it's counterintuitive if they will, Stephen, why wouldn't it be more poisonous to take more at once? I would suspect part of that is how the body processes it. But when you give the body a little bit today, let me put some make put this in concrete. Let's say the LD50 of chlorofacinone. Don't take this as gospel. I'm just using it as a, a fake illustration. Okay. So let's say we have chlorofacinone. Let's say the LD50 for a rat is eight milligrams per kilogram to kill a rat. You feed a rat, what, what we said earlier, four milligrams because it doesn't weigh a pound, it doesn't weigh 2.2 pounds, we only give it four milligrams, 50% of those rats are going to die if you give it four milligrams all at once. Okay, fair enough? With the subacute, with the way first generation anticoagulants work, if you gave the toxicant to that rat one milligram on day one, another milligram on day two, and a third milligram on day three, you would probably get a 50% mortality in those rats. But notice we didn't even reach the four milligram of the LD50. It was only three milligrams that we gave the rats. So we could actually use less toxicant and still have the same LD50 effect. A lot of people don't, a lot of pest controllers I've noticed don't understand that when we say that when we're looking at the multiple feed first generation anticoagulants, they're actually more toxic over time than if you ate it all at once. So don't think for one minute that your second generation anticoagulants are automatically more effective just because they're single dose anticoagulants. All right, let's go to the next one. So what is the problem with the LD50? Well, as I said before, an LD50 is what is the dose necessary to kill 50% of the test population. So what that means is only 50% of the rats die, which therefore means 50% of the rats live. So understand that when you have an L, when you're trying to compare toxicant A with toxicant B, we're we're still getting to an effect of there's other 50% of those animals are going to live in both in both studies because the LD50 is only an average. It's a way of averaging out so we can compare how how toxic toxicant A is compared to toxicant. How do we tell whether one LD50 is more, one product is more toxic than another? Well, by looking at the LD50, because again, they're always written in milligrams per kilogram. How many milligrams of toxicant per how many kilograms of animal? The smaller the milligram number, the more toxic the product is. So an eight milligram per kilogram LD50 is more toxic than a 16 milligram per kilogram. It's actually twice as toxic because you have to use twice as much of the 16 milligrams as you would the 8 milligrams. Okay? So always look at the milligram number and the smaller that number is, the more toxic the item is. But always keep in mind that 50% of, of the population exists. Here's the other problem with the LD50. The LD50 is a snapshot. It only says once you get to 50%, that is the number we're going to be using. Now, if everything's fine, if you have what's called a linear 
ratio of toxicity. Now that's getting a little heady here, so let me try to unpack that for you. That is, if a product, if you just add a little bit more product, let's say that, do you just get a little bit more effect? Is it linear? So if I add, if I have a hundred pennies, for instance, and I have and I and I have 50 pennies at this moment, and I weigh it. If I just add one more penny, I'm just going to be going up in weight one one fiftieth more. But not all toxicants act that way. Sometimes toxicants, when you add a little bit more, they become incredibly more lethal because it's a tipping point. Now the picture you see on your screen is showing you a linear relationship. As you add a little bit more toxicant, you get a little bit more mortality. However, the next slide I'm going to show you, notice the comparison with these two. Notice how they both have the same LD50. So toxicant A at the top is a linear growth. Add a little bit more toxicant, get a little bit more kill rate. The bottom one add a little bit more beyond the LD50 and you get a significantly more toxic effect because the relationship is not linear. So this is why it's important to understand that the LD50 is helpful, but it doesn't tell you the whole story about how toxic a particular chemical is. And you won't know this unless you do additional research about that particular product that you're looking at. And most of us just aren't going to do that. We don't, we don't have the time to do that, don't have the need to do that. But what is important about understanding LD50 and the fact that you don't know what the full toxic profile of that pesticide is, it means don't tweak the label. Now I know we're good Americans out here, right? So good Americans, they believe if a little bit is good, a little bit more is better. Well, that's not the case when it comes to rodenticides. The labels are written to help you balance efficacy with safety. That's how those labels are written. That's what the EPA wants with those toxic labels. When you're using a, a rodenticide, let's say, to go kill some mice or go kill some rats, those, pro those labels are written to balance the need for efficacy with safety. So if you're reading the label and the label says you're only supposed to use, let's say, a pound, and you're like, well, screw that, I'm going to really kill these rats, I'm going to use two pounds. By adding additional bait in that particular situation, you, are, you can be substantially increasing the risk to non-target animals and to people as well. Because you don't know the full level of that toxicant profile. And even if you did, you're still violating the label. The point is don't tweak the label. Now I know with baits, it's a little bit different because it already comes prepackaged. But for those of us that work in more agricultural settings, dealing with things like prairie dogs and ground squirrels, where you're, able to, where you're doing broadcast baiting or, or burrow baiting, you have a lot more, you know, it says to use six pounds an acre a lot of times. But if you're out there using 12 pounds an acre, you have, or 10 pounds an acre, you have substantially increased the hazards of that particular landscape because zinc phosphide is an incredibly toxic product. So don't tweak the label is what I'm trying to get to you. Why? Because you don't know what that full profile is. And you may think, well, I'm really taking it to these animals here, but you may be making it much more dangerous for a, when a child encounters that toxic or a pet encounters that toxic. You may be increasing the likelihood that they die rather than just getting really, really sick. Okay, So be very, very careful about understanding LD50 and the limits. LD50 is important because it gives us a way of comparing two different toxicants, but it doesn't tell us the whole story. It's only a snapshot, and it doesn't tell us how dangerous the product is on a subacute level if we, if we eat it a little bit over time or if we add a little bit more, or in some cases, if we take away a little bit. 
you know, cuts both ways. Because look at the top right picture. You notice that if you if you start removing toxicin, its efficacy drops pretty fast. Where the one on the bottom, you can take away a little bit more toxicin. There's almost no difference in how toxic it is. How many how many animals are killed? Look at one. You can start almost at one milligram per kilogram on the bottom one, and you're still getting 41 percent mortality. It's not till you get up to over 100 milligrams a kilogram that you start getting into substantially more than 50% mortality. So don't tweak the label, but understand that the LD50 only gives you a snapshot of how toxic that animal is for 50% of the population. It doesn't tell you the whole toxicant profile. So I hope that's been helpful for you to understand a little bit more about LD50. LD50 only deals with acute poisoning. How much, how much does the animal have to eat at once for 50% of the population to die? And then understand that it, doesn't, it only helps us in a limited way to understand the comparison, how to compare toxicant A with toxicant B in terms of their lethality. It doesn't deal with subchronic or subacute exposures, I should say, in terms of how toxic it is if we take a little bit over time. All right, I know that was really geeky there, and I hope that would uh, help you understand that LD50 and how it's good and bad. It can be a little deceiving if you're not careful. I'm Stephen Van Tassel, Wildlife Control Consultant. Hey, take, take a few moments, drop me a note, give me a ring at, uh, drop me a line at my email address at wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com. That's wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. And if you have ideas for future shows or topics you want to discuss, by all means, please reach out to do that. If you're interested in being on the show, if you have a product or an item you'd like to have spotlighted, again, reach out to me at the same way, and I'll send you some literature on how to become, uh, get an interview on the Pest Geek Podcheck show. Don't forget, subscribe to the podcast here below. We'd love to have you. If you have comments, love to get those as well. And then always remember, we're here to help you live the wildlife, not be the wildlife. I'm Stephen Van Tassel for Wildlife Control Consultant. Take care, everybody.